Yeah, we are at this thing. We are about to get it started. Okay, we've been doing debates. All right, me and the Christians, we've been doing debates. And in this debate, I want you all to learn something, okay? And I want y'all to pay attention to how people believe and what they believe about Jesus. So we're going to be playing this, and then we're going to be stopping, all right? Are we taking notes? Uh, if you want to, if you want to. And I'm live because I'm going to be using this message, all right, at another time. But it's all good. Y'all can talk. So here it is. I'm turning it up now. Introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name's Rick Horn, man. Can y'all hear it? Oh, okay. It's on one ear, huh? I noticed you want that. To tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm trying to turn you up a little bit more. You know, my name's Raekwon from South Florida. We're originally from the Bahamas. Um, you know, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm trying to get point. past all this. I'm just or the Messiah. I'm just for some reason. I want to let him talk because he talked a lot. Um, it's basically like word for word, like exact words. Right. So I ask right. him. I ask him. Does he know what verbatim means? He said, yeah, you know, word for word. That's what he says. All right, so now we're going to keep going. And I just want something coming from God Almighty. Now, we know Paul talks about it. Paul talks about it more than any other apostle in the entire Bible right. about Jesus dying for your sins. But we want to know where does God talk about that at? So you are on. Okay, now, let me ask you this, right? Do you believe in the Old Testament? Um, do I believe in the Bible? Yes. Uh, because I believe the Bible has truth and falsehood. I believe in Jeremiah 8.8 8 in the Bible. Do you know what that says off the top of your head? Not necessarily. It says, Lo... How can you say we are wise um, and the law of the Lord is with us for certainly in vain, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. Okay, so it's talking about the scribes were writing lies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, if I'm going to use the Bible to prove to you that Jesus died for our sins, and you don't quite believe in the Bible, how can I prove that to you? But I'm willing to. I just want to know if you believe in the Bible, you know what I mean? So I'm going to use straight scriptures. I'm not going to go off my own understanding. I'm going off scriptures only. All right. Well, what I believe uh, really doesn't have anything to do with if you can find a scripture with God oh. Almighty saying, Jesus is going to die for your sins. All right. Okay. Um, so, if you go to Jeremiah twenty-three five verse six, right? This is the Lord. Let me get there. It, huh? Let me get there real quick. Twenty-three. No yep. Jeremiah twenty-three, chapter twenty-three, verse five through six. All right. Let's go. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up. For David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live free, will live in safety. I'm sorry. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, uh, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Now, when you look at that word Savior, what my, does that say? Let's pause right there. Now, he pulled a script coming from Jeremiah. Now, if you are going to equate that with Jesus, in the days of Jesus, was Judas saved? Wasn't they oppressed? Didn't Jesus depart after 33 years of living and the whole nation of Israel as a whole went into captivity 
Y'all got to speak up. Yeah. 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 So, and we're going to keep going on that. Righteousness. Don't say Savior. I'm looking at the KJV. Yours? Yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking at the KJV. That's like the original, like, standard, like, for debating. You know, people like to stay with the KJV. Okay. No, no. No problem, no problem. You pull out my King James version, you know. I, I have that on deck, you know what I mean? I have that on deck, right? For sure. I have that on deck, right? So, that's 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 one, right? One That's one prophecy that Jesus fulfilled, right? He is the seed of David, right? Everyone, when he came into, when he came into the um, temple, everyone was laying down. You know, their coats and garments and branches. Hosanna to the son of David, right? All right, we're going to stop right there. Now, they love to pull that one, but you got to keep in mind, Jesus went and got donkeys, okay? And they put clothes on the donkeys. And remember, what did Jesus do the first time they tried to make him king? He ran. He ran. He flee. He flee. He ran. Y'all all right. He ran. He did not try to be a king. He ran and hid in a mountain to pray. All right, because he wasn't trying to be king. Because God was his king. And Jesus was advanced in the Bible. He knew and his heart was broken along with the prophet Samuel. For when the first time the children of Israel asked for a king. All right. The Bible says it was wicked because God was their king. So you got to understand, Jesus wasn't trying to be king. God was his king. He said, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the power, for thine is the glory. Jesus honored his father as king. So they'll try to pull that Hosanna, all right? But you got to understand. Jesus didn't try to be a king. When they told him he was the king of the, Jew, of the Jews, um, Pilate told him, he said, he asked him, he said, aren't you the king of the Jews? And he said, thou sayest, you know, for this cause I was born to bear witness to the truth. So now we're going to keep going. Oh, you're talking about towards the end. Of the book of Matthew, you're talking about when he went to go get a mule and a donkey, and they put yeah, they put right. they put the clothes on the donkey, and yeah, yeah, they was calling him. Um, they was saying Hosanna. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, go ahead. All right, all right. One second. You got my other notes here. Let me make sure. You know, I got my notes in my Bible here. Sorry. You good? You good? <laughs> Let me speed it up a little bit. Because he gave birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel, right? Now, do you know what the word Emmanuel means? Yep, it means God with us. Right, God is with us, right? Yep. Now, all throughout history, it's only one person everyone knows. No matter which religion, no matter what you believe in, everybody knows Mary gave, Mary's the only person to be born of a virgin, right? Mary is the only person to be born of a virgin, or Jesus is the only person to be born of a virgin? Well, uh, yeah, Jesus was the only person to be born of a virgin from Mary, right? Yeah. Now, do you know why Jesus was born from a virgin? Right? Uh, you can explain. Go ahead. The one man sin entered into the world, which was from Adam. So by one man... There you go again. That teaching comes from Paul. That comes from Paul's theology. Remember, Paul was the son of a Pharisee. His father was a Pharisee. They had strange beliefs concerning the resurrection and concerning Adam 
and concerning Christ. Okay, that was his theology. That was his theology. And also, you got to keep in mind, didn't sin into the world through Adam and Eve? <laughs> didn't Adam and Eve both sin? They both sinned. All right. So when people try to push that narrative about sin entering the world through one man, no, it, it actually entered through this world. OK, because there was a serpent and there was Eve and there was Adam and all three failed all three of them. So keep in mind and pay attention to how he's going to keep trying to make me agree with him. And I'm just going to be quiet. I'm going to let him explain. Sin will leave the world, which is by who? Christ himself, right? Uh, yeah. I, I disagree, but go ahead. Oh, tell me why you disagree. No, I'm letting you, I'm letting you prove your point, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing a Bible study with you. I'm just letting you present your, ob your, um, your, your, um, take on why you believe the Bible says Jesus is going to die for your sins. If I was going to debate, I would have stopped right when you was talking about King. Okay. But I, I didn't, I'm gonna let you go ahead and fully, um, present your case and everybody is hearing you because you are live and we are recording it. Right. Right. Now, where was I? Through one man yeah. sin into the world. Yeah. By one man sin entered into the world, which is from Adam. So by one man, it was only right for God for sin to enter, a way for sin to enter out of the world through one man, which was Jesus Christ, right? Now, Jesus came into the world from a virgin birth for a reason. Because we are carnal, right? Our nature is sin. We are born into sin, right? It's like we can't, we can't not sin. It's nobody on this earth that is perfect. All right, we're gonna stop right there, and I'm gonna pull a few Bible scriptures. Okay, I am gonna type in the word perfect. All right, and the first time perfect is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis 6 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Anybody tell me what the word just means? Righteous. That's right. Righteous. He was a righteous man. Did the Bible say he was a sinful man? No. Did the Bible says he was a wicked man? No. The Bible says he was a righteous man. Now watch this. And perfect in his generation. Now we know that the words in italics really wasn't even there. So if we really look at that verse, it says Noah was a Noah was a just man, perfect. Dang. This is what the Bible says. So this is what people, I'm telling you, people push the narrative that can't nobody obey God. Now we're going to look at Genesis 17.1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, he was 99, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. He told Abraham to be perfect. Did he tell him, hey, I know you got a problem with sin and, you know, you can't help it. But, you know, I just want you to do your best. What did he say, y'all? To be perfect. He said, be perfect. OK, why would God tell you to be perfect if you could not be perfect? Somebody tell me. What y'all think about that? Do y'all believe that if this person didn't have the capability to be perfect, God wouldn't have said that, or he would have said that, okay? He wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have said that if he didn't have the capabilities to be perfect, all right? Now, I want more. This is going to be Deuteronomy 18, verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Here we have another scripture telling us to be perfect. All right. Now we know that God is perfect. This is Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So God is perfect. Now, 
This is going to be 1 King 15, 3. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. So that's indicating that David had a perfect heart. All right. First Kings 15, 14. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. So we're reading about people who had a perfect relationship with God. Their hearts were perfect. Okay. Now, Enoch, the Bible says he walked with God and he vanished. He was taken, taken up. Because he walked with God. Okay. So people could walk with the Lord. People could be righteous. Now there's somebody else who said something about perfect. This is going to be Matthew 5. Uh, actually Matthew 5 48. Jesus says this more than any other prophet. Look what he says. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Perfect. Jesus is telling his people to be perfect, just like God is perfect. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus said unto him, If you will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. He didn't say keep the Sabbath and you'll be perfect. No, he said if you will just sell what you have and give to the poor, because you got to remember, Jesus, the way he taught, he always taught about helping the poor. That was like one of the main subjects. That was the main topic he preached on. Okay. Now, this is in the Bible. This, I'm going to go to Luke 640. The, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be his master. All right. So this is in the Bible, man. This is in the Bible. We're going to keep going. I just want y'all to know from the Bible that Paul, he came up with this teaching and he gets it from Psalms where it says no one is good, no one is righteous and all these type of things. And the thing about Paul, we got his letters first. So we can't even really put so much of our trust in the scriptures that Paul references. We don't even know that if Paul is the one who put him there. All right. Because he is into justifying the wicked. Now we want to keep going. Nobody can walk righteously, perfectively, but Jesus. And the Is that a lie? He said nobody can walk perfectly but Jesus. That's a lie. That's a lie. That is a complete lie. The first time perfect is mentioned is because Noah was perfect. Let me tell you something. There are some people who love God and there's people that hate God. There's people sitting in your face right now. And they smiling and chuckling and playing games. But deep down inside, they hate God. They really hate God. They are only a part of what you're doing because either they have to or they are afraid to go to hell. So right here you see that people lie. They want to say, oh, can nobody be righteous? Can nobody be perfect? No, there's people who do not play games, who do not sit around and waste time. There's people who pray. There's people who worship. There's people who love God. Even today, even today, you just don't see them. Okay, so now we're going to let this guy keep going. The way that he did that is because he was not born of a man, but he was born of God, right? He was born from the spirit into a virgin, not from a man and a woman that's partly sin, right? Now, now you notice I ain't saying nothing. He keeps saying right, and I'm just like, I'm letting you say what you say because I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that according to your Bible. Let's keep going. He lived a perfect life, right? Keep going. All right. Shed his blood, because when you look at it, the only way for us to have repentance or for us, to our sins to be washed away in the old times was by sin offerings, right? Burnt offerings, right? Yeah. But God got 
I are burnt offerings. He's like, I'm full of burnt offerings. I'm full of all these burnt offerings. So I will give you the Savior. I, the Lord, will give you a Savior. What he was speaking about Jesus. When you look at all the prophets throughout history, they were speaking about Jesus, right? They were speaking about Jesus coming into existence. None of them knew it was Jesus, you know, obviously, but they were preaching and from the word of God that God gave them, the revelation that God gave them, they were preaching about Jesus, right? That is completely false. God speaks of many messengers. Even John the Baptist is spoken of in Scripture. God speaks of the Gentile messenger in Scripture. God is not centered around one person. Okay? And this is evidently true for the fact that the first prophet who God used was not a J. He was an M. He was Moses. Okay, and the person that was named Moses, God made him a God to Pharaoh. He didn't make Joshua a God to Pharaoh. He made the M, Moses, a God to Pharaoh. And Joshua was his minister. Joshua was his assistant. And God told Joshua, he used Joshua to make the sun stand still. Ain't that amazing? That is deep. He was like, look, Joshua, look, Yeshua. I want you to make all that sun stuff stop. Stop it. All right. I don't want the sons to be exalted above the father. So now we're going to keep going. You didn't really understand until you got to you got to Isaiah. That's when you started to understand more. Right. And let me give you a passage. So, you know, this let me give you a passage so you can um, understand it real quick. Okay, there we go. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 8, it's a little bit long, but if you go to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 7 to 21, Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah, and he shall overflow and go, and he shall reach even to the next, and stretching of his wings shall fill the, the breath of thy land. O Emmanuel, right? O Emmanuel. Emmanuel is Jesus, right? Associate yourself, O ye people. You see that? He's trying to use Paul's tent peg. He's trying to make you believe what he is saying, okay? Now, according to the Bible in the New Testament, did people go around calling Jesus Emmanuel? No. 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 And if y'all pay attention to the scripture he's reading, it's going to bring out how God is going to use Emmanuel. God is going to use this stumbling stone to mislead the people. And God is going to use the disciples to mislead the people. Just pay attention. And ye shall be broken into pieces and give air all ye of far countries Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. For God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of the people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy. To all them to whom his people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and, a, and for a rock of offense, to both the house of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right, so the stumbling stone is going to be a snare to both of the houses of Israel. 
Ephraim and Judah and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This stone is going to cause you to stumble. You know why? Because you're going to believe it's God. You're going to believe it died for your sins. Now pay attention. Watch this. Many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. What does, sna what does snared mean? Trap. Trapped. And we just read the scripture that literally says, let their table be made a snare to them. Let their eyes be darkened. This is what he told Isaiah as well. All right, so let's keep going. The testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Bind the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. In other words, I got my disciples involved with this thing. I've got them in my cause. They are going to deceive. Okay? Shh, shh, be quiet. That's why he said, bind the law. Seal it. Seal it among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord, the Lord, that hideth that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not should not the people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead. Right. Why are you waiting for people to rise from the dead? Why you believe in something coming from the dead? Should not a people trust in one God? Okay. If you literally just read that book. What he's talking about is testifying against him. Shouldn't a people seek their God? Why are you waiting for something to rise from the dead to be your God? Let's keep to going. the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this words, is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it. Hardly be fed, hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fear it themselves and curse their king and their God. And now, it just tells you how off he is. Why is you reading the whole chapter? Why is you reading that whole chapter? Okay, there was only a few key verses in there. Okay, but this just shows you how off people be. Let's keep going. Look upward, right? Now... That whole passage was Isaiah saying, the Lord is coming, right? And he's coming and he will be a stumbling block for many because their hearts are hardened and they cannot understand, right? Now, I don't want to I don't want to just go into the New Testament because, you know, of course, the New Testament proves that Jesus died for our sins. You know what I mean? That. That wouldn't that wouldn't really make sense in um, the case if I just go to the New Testament. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I'm just trying to go off of just purely Old Testament, you okay. know. But all right, so let's let's go here. Let's um, let's go. I mean, you you said a lot. You you've said a lot, and you you still got a little bit more. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Another thing too is they love to hog. They love to just take all the time. All right? And they're ungrateful. They don't even appreciate it. They just want to take up all the time and talk around the obvious question. What was the question that I asked? Let's see if somebody was paying attention. What was the question I asked in the beginning? Did Jesus die for our sins? All right, that's what I said. Anybody knows a little bit more of what I said? Um, Jesus is God. Uh, that was not necessarily in it. I mean, what was I asking? To show a scripture if Jesus even died for our sins. Coming from God Almighty. All right, this is what I've been going over this whole two weeks. 
I've been asking for a Christian to show me in the Bible, verbatim, where God says Jesus is going to die for your sins. Did y'all hear anything like that coming from this guy? No. Didn't hear nothing. He's giving a lecture. He's he 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 he's showing me his Bible knowledge. Okay. He's trying to show me how much he knows. I don't care how much you know. I want to know if you have an answer to the scripture. Okay. But I'm I'm being nice and I'm letting him speak on. And I told him, I said, look, hey man, you, you've been doing a lot of talking. I mean, do you still have more? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Look, even in Genesis 12, um, verse 3, God told Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation, all people on earth will be blessed through you, right? Now, Jesus fulfilled. Now, if anybody is smart, you'll know that Abraham is the father of who? All nations. All nations. Now, who is the creator of? Of the Jewish nation. Now I know you want to go to Jacob, but think again. Think again. Who is the one who hammered the nation of Israel into a nation with a law? Who is that? Uh, Moses. Moses. Okay. Moses did that. So Moses is the creator of the Israelites religion now Jacob is the creator of the people who are Jews okay because his name was changed to Israel Abraham was a Gentile Abraham was not a Jew Abraham was not a Christian Abraham was just one that had faith in God alright so that just shows you how off he is again Abraham is not the creator of the Jewish people. That promise in Matthew 1 verse 1, you know, and in the, theolo in the theology of Jesus, he's the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham, right? That's another prophecy that Jesus, you know, he came to be. And, um... Let's see, let's see, let me go here in my notes. All right, that was Genesis um, 12. No, 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 it's not Genesis 12. Yeah, Genesis 12, verse 3. Yep, yep. All right, and Isaac wasn't born, born at the time, right? Isaac? Isaac wasn't born at the time, right? When it, when that was said, right? Um, no, no. Okay. All right. I'm just showing you that Jesus, like God promised Abraham that all peoples on earth will be blessed through him. Right? No, that's false too. Because you got to remember, when God told Abram this Ishmael or Isaac was not born. The person that was going to be born next was Ishmael. And through Isaac, we have a messenger that was sent only to reach the lost sheep of Israel. And his name was what? Jesus. Jesus was sent to reach the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not the Gentiles, okay? Now, the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he came from Ishmael, and he is the Gentile messenger sent to reach the whole of humanity, as seen in your own Bibles in Genesis 49.10. If you can read, it tells you that the scepter is going to leave Judah and it's going to go to Shiloh. So he's trying to say all the families in the earth is going to be blessed through Jesus. And that is completely false. Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what's so sad about it is that Israel did not even receive him as a messenger, as a whole. Let's keep going. Right. Yep. We'll be blessed through him. And Jesus fulfilled that promise by Jesus coming into the world, right? You got to understand, 
all throughout the Old Testament, Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophecies without a flaw, right? 300 prophecies he's fulfilled, but God never once said that Jesus is going to die for your sins one time. Moses never said Jesus is going to die for your sins one time. All he's doing is he's trying to show me all the prophecies concerning Jesus. He's avoiding the real question. The real question is, did God ever say Jesus is going to die for your sins? If you say no, you know what happens? The ground has just been pulled from beneath you. The ground has swallowed up the sons of Korah, and they don't have anything to stand on but the crutches coming from Paul. All they have is the legs coming from Paul. They don't have nothing coming from God Almighty when he is approving of child sacrifice. They have the opposite. God is against human sacrifice. He's against you sacrificing your sons and your daughters. So we're going to let him keep going. For him to even fulfill one of those is, is a one with 17 zeros behind it. That's just to fulfill one, right? That's just the chance of him fulfilling one, you know? And he fulfilled 300 of them, right? Now, let me give you another one. And, um... Uh, where we go, where we go? Let me go on my notes here. Okay, and then you go to Mekai, uh, 5-2. What is that? Mekai, M-I-C-A-H. Micah? Yeah, Mike. Okay. Sorry, Micah. Mm-hmm. Right, chapter 5, verse 2. Just let me know when you're there. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. But you, Bethlehem, Ephraim, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be a ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, for from ancient times now Jesus fulfilled that prophecy when he was born and and um, Caesar Augustus issued a decree mandating the uh, was Jesus at that time a ruler over Israel no no Jesus was oppressed he was oppressed Jesus paid taxes through Peter okay so you got to pay attention to the, the, the language and the words people use, they are very crafty in the things they say, okay? And that word ruler, if you actually look at it, it translates to governor, all right? doesn't say king, okay? It speaks of him being a governor, all right? Over Israel, all right? Just like Joseph was. Joseph was a governor, he was not Pharaoh. He was not king. All right, we're going to keep going, and we're almost done for today. We're going to pick back up on this. A scene is that every citizen should reg register in town to um, of their family's origin, right? So Joseph went up um, from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David while they were there, the time came for the baby, Jesus, to be born, and she gave birth to a first son, right? That's when she gave birth to a first son. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to Hosea 11, chapter 11, verse 1. All right. Hosea 11. Yep, verse 1. Let me try to get it in my King James version as well for you so I can read it in King James. You know, King James is, is top flight. He being funny. But check this out, and we'll go over this too. Let me speed him up. Thank you. Let's see, 11, verse 1. Okay. When Israel was a child... Then I loved him and called my son 
out of Egypt, right? All right, we're going to pause right there. Now, that is spoken of, all right, in the Gospels. However, the Gospel writer was writing and he was giving his own interpretation. He was writing, okay, and he was trying to make that scripture talk about Jesus. Now, if you really look at that scripture, does the Bible call Israel his son? No. Yes. Yes. Does the Bible call Israel his son? Yes. 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 He calls Israel his son. Did it say out of Egypt I called Jesus? No. No. It don't say that. When did God call Israel out of Egypt? When he took them out of slavery. When he took them out of slavery. So if you look at Hosea 11... Verse 1, it is literally talking about the nation of Israel being called out of Egypt. But this gospel writer, I'm telling you, man, these gospel writers, man, I'm telling you, man, they literally painted the narrative and they did a metaphorical speech. OK, and they made it refer to Jesus. OK, now keep going. That's what he said. Yeah. Israel was a child and I love them. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Now y'all get it. When Israel was a child. It didn't say when Jesus was a child, I called him out. This is talking about the nation of Israel. Now, when you match that up with Matthew, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 2. But we're going to go to Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 through 15. King Herod ruled the Philistines when Jesus was born. And he felt threatened when he heard the birth. And planned to kill him. An angel of the Lord went to Joseph in a dream to take Mary and Jesus and escape to Egypt where they lived for a time. And then, you know, the angel came to to Joseph. Hold up. Hold Herod up. Died. We got to pause then that. They were Did this guy just say Herod ruled the Philistines? Did y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody paying attention. I'm going to bring that back real quick. Well, threatened when he heard the birth and planned to... Now, when you match that up with Matthew, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 2, but we're going to go to Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 through 15. King Herod ruled the Philistines when... No, my bro, <laughs> bro said Herod ruled the Philistines. Now, what nation? Okay, okay, you got to think about it. Who was the Israelites in captivity to? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Romans. The Romans. The Romans. Okay, not the Philistines. They ain't even they ain't even nowhere on the scene. This is talking about the Romans, y'all. All right. And that slipped past me. That slipped past me because he was a little long winded and he was gone for a while. Jesus was born. What's up? So this thing wherever he's talking about ain't nowhere near what the question you asked. Nowhere near the question I asked. A lot of people, man, I'm telling you, when you start studying and you start knowing things, you get excited, okay? You start learning things, you get excited, okay? Especially when you're a novice, okay? You got about five, six months in of studying the Bible. That's not a long time at all. So you excited and you want to show everybody you know something, but by doing something, you're showing us that you really don't know a much as as you you come off. And he's 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 on the ropes. If we was in a boxing ring, he is on the ropes. Okay, he is not in the fight. Okay, he actually he he's actually punching himself a few times. He punched him. He punched himself. Okay. And you're going to see there's going to be a few more times where he's going to punch himself. And I'm going to go a few more minutes and we'll cut it off because this and is he felt pretty long. When he heard the birth and planned to kill him, 
an angel of the Lord went to Joseph in a dream to take Mary and Jesus and escape to Egypt where they lived for a time. And then, you know, the angel came to, to Joseph after Herod died. Then they returned to Nazareth. Matthew records, and so was filled, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophets. Out of Egypt I have called my son. All right. right. Okay. Now let me yeah. go to a next. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. So we're gonna say. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now let me go to a next one. Jeremiah thirty-one, um, fifteen. This is what the Lord says: A voice is heard in Rama, mourning and great weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refused to be comforted because they are no more. Now, Rachel. It seems like this guy literally got online, and he found an article, <laughs> and he is literally reading through the whole thing. Okay, because if you notice, he's literally just going line by line okay telling you the history okay and it just seems like it's somebody else's article all right i'm gonna I'm keep going he's talking about the land is weeping and and um weeping and mourning for our children and refuse to be comforted because they are no more now remember king herod was killing all of the young babies because he wanted to kill christ right that's why the land was weeping for her children and was not comforted because they were no more. That was fulfilled another prophecy in the same passage, um, Matthew um, chapter 2, 23. So it was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that, you know, um, yeah, so it was fulfilled that was said through the prophets, you know, Matthew, that, you know, Rachel will be mourning and weeping for her children and that Jesus will be called a Nazarene, right? Yeah, you know, let me yeah. Know. That scripture is nowhere, in, there's no scripture in the Bible where there's a reference to that. What, out of, um... Uh, that he will be called a Nazarene. What, Jesus will be called a Nazarene? Yeah, there's no... Yeah. It's in Matthew chapter 2. 20. Now, this right here shows you how you're not studied up. I'm, t I'm telling him there's no reference in the Bible where it says Jesus is called a Nazarene. All right. What he's doing is he's going back to the New Testament and he's repeating that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's in here. But a reference is what? When you go back to the Old Testament and you find it, like for instance, you will read a scripture and it is saying, as it is written, blah, 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 blah. What that means is it's somewhere in the Old Testament and it's there somewhere. If it's saying, as it is written, then that means it's in the Old Testament. Now, the strange thing about Matthew is when they say he shall be called a Nazarene, according to the prophets, in that particular verse, y'all, guess what? It's nowhere in the Old Testament. There's not one time where it says he shall be called a Nazarene. OK, so I'm calling him out on that. I'm calling him out on that. I'm like, I'm like, look. That's not in the Old Testament. And he's going to the New Testament because he don't understand. Now watch this, and then we'll be done. No, I'm talking about a reference to that, that he will be called a Nazarene. Like you're reading, you're reading scriptures, okay, from the New Testament, okay, but when it says, as it is written, and it's talking about according to the scriptures, there is no reference to that. Where it's saying Nazareth. Yes. He was born. He was born in Bethlehem. He was born. He was born in Bethlehem. But he's called a Nazarene because they left when King Herod. And he still doesn't get it. He's still trying to explain how Jesus is a Nazarene. But I'm asking him to show me in the Old Testament where it is written. Where the prophet said it. Now, the Bible literally said according to the prophets. 
So that means it's more than one prophet that says Jesus will be called a Nazarene. But the thing about it, y'all, is it's nowhere in the entire Old Testament. Nobody even said anything about him being a Nazarene. Now, the word Nazarene is not even mentioned reference to Jesus, okay? It's sad. It's, it's sad, and he still don't get it. And you know what? We'll pick back up on this. We'll pick back up on this. Let me see the time stamp. We are at 22.58 into this message, and I have a question. Well, um, it's like he's just going around the block. But if I was there, I would have said, can I ask you something? He said, yeah. I'm like, I would have said, what does this have to do with my topic? I'm, right. My broadcast and my topic is Jesus did not die for your sins. Uh, you haven't mentioned anything of it. You're just going around the block. So what does this you're saying or reading to me has to do with my topic? Right. And see, this is the thing. Okay. First impressions is everything. And I'm not trying to come off like an asshole. I'm letting the guy speak. I'm letting him talk. I told him what I wanted. I asked him verbatim what I wanted. And for some reason in the Christian's mind, they just, they go into this delusion. They go into this, I call it the Jesus delusion, where they feel like they have to push their witchcraft or they feel like they have to force Christianity on you. Now, a wise Christian would say, you know what, there's no scripture like that in there is nothing I can give you. You're absolutely right. You pointed that out. There's no scripture in the entire Bible where God Almighty says that. All right. But if you don't mind, I just want to tell you why I believe that. I want to tell you why I believe in Jesus. Okay. That's 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 the best thing they could say. But for some reason, they'll say, well, um, Emmanuel, and then they'll say, oh, the prophecies, and then they'll say, oh, and it is like they'll try to give you 50,000 verses, 50,000 words, you know, to prove that Jesus died for their sins, because they don't have any ground to stand on. They ain't got nothing. They literally don't have nothing, and so... I do these debates so that the people in the world, okay, when they look at this debate, they can find out because a lot of Christians, they are not even studied up, studied up enough to even know that it's not in the Bible. A lot of people did not know that God never said anything about Jesus dying for your sins and that all the Christian has is conjecture and and assumption, which is exactly what the prophet Muhammad said. He said they don't have nothing but assumption and conjecture. So I, I, I let the thing play out to see if they would come around to their senses and be like, damn, I'm just I'm just on a treadmill and I'm just running in the same spot. But they don't get it. They don't get it. They just keep going and keep going and keep going. All right. So now we're done and we will pick back up. At the time stamp, 22.58. Now it's time for us to get in the word. Is y'all down or not? I'm down. Let's get it. <laughs> 